Well, it seems no matter what the occasion, politics seeps into the discussion, and this weekend's presentation of the Oscars is no exception. Based on a true story, despite the mileage on those words, they continue to be a box office draw. For some pictures, such as Best Picture nominee Selma, the key part of the descriptor is based on, meaning the film's foundation may be based on real life, but the story may not be historically accurate. Selma portrays President Johnson's involvement in a way not consistent with actual history, but again, films of this genre are often an adaptation based upon real life. In contrast, the wife of Navy SEAL marksman Chris Kyle says the film Sniper was a remarkably accurate portrayal of her late husband. Either way, these are politically based films which continue to find their way into the coveted position of Best Picture nominations for the Oscar. For studios and filmmakers, part of the attraction is biopic are easier to sell. The stock for the story, it's already there, and such films can spend less time on exposition and jump right in. For the audience, perhaps the lore is seeing part of their lives projected upon the silver screen. To discuss how and why politics is taking such a big role and what is supposed to be an award ceremony, we're returning again. Our guests are Paul Levinson. He's a professor of media studies at Fordham University. Also returning for this segment are Ben Arredondo, and Barna Donovan from St. Peter's University Media Department. And via Skype, producer, filmmaker, and director Fraser Heston is joining us as well, the son of Charlton Heston. Okay, gentlemen, the, the, the movie we're talking about is American Sniper. Uh, many people say it's a glorification of war. Uh, an American hero who ironically, I think, and not too many people mention, was killed by somebody suffering from uh, the trauma of being in war. Uh, is it too much, too little? Is this something really that's important or not? Well, I think it's very important. It's a part of our culture. Uh, there's no reason that a movie shouldn't be made of it. And I thought it was an excellent movie. I do want to say, however, though, that there's an inherent issue with any historical drama, any docudrama. And it even goes beyond whether the facts are 100% accurate. Back in the 1970s, there was a miniseries on television called Ike. It was about Dwight Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And Robert Duvall played mm -hmm. Ike. And I remember I was watching it, and I said to my wife, you know, maybe I was wrong about Eisenhower. He was much more dynamic, right. you know. And what I was really reacting to was Duvall's performance, because he had charisma that Eisenhower didn't have. So we have to accept these movies are in inherently deceptive. Now, and his wife says, uh, of, of The American Sniper, that it depicts that story fairly accurately. Now, this is his wife who should know. Uh, she wasn't in Iraq, obviously, but she was married to the man. So, do we have reason to believe it's not accurate? Uh, well, maybe Barney, you could pick it up. Right, as, as, as far as I know, uh, no, I've seen interviews with her where she said that uh, she was uh, uh, really stunned by what a good job she did playing Chris True. Kyle. Uh, also, with the, uh, I, I agree with Paul, they uh, definitely films have to uh, address the, uh, the great issues of the day, especially when we're in a war, you know, unlike with Vietnam, where Hollywood tried to stay away for, the, for, for many years. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I don't think that this film glorifies war at all. Mm -hmm. I don't think any uh, normal person could, would sit through this film and say, oh my God, I want to go and fight in a war. This makes a war look so, look so fun. It showed the, the very terrible impact it had on, on his psyche, on his, on his marriage. So I, I, I like the film a lot. Let's talk about Argo for a moment, a movie that came out several years ago. And I remember the ending was very dramatic where the police were chasing the plane down the road. And it didn't happen. That's not how it happened. If you listen to the people involved in that, they sat in the waiting room, got on the plane, and they flew off. You know. But I think most people who maybe weren't alive at that time or didn't read the story properly or didn't read about it would believe that that's how it happened. What, what disservice do we do, Ben, or do directors do when they do something like that? Well, um, I just I want to bring it back to American Sniper and, and with that question. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons that people are, are, you know, criticizing it for not being accurate is that there's been some stories about his biography that um, have um, been proven to, to not be 100% true. Um, and the whole Jesse Ventura um, set, um, suit is, is an example of that. So when that happens, you, I think people assume like, well, maybe, you know, this isn't really what is going on. But I think generally the movie is great and, and, and um, you know, it, it's, in, it's entertainment. And that's at the bottom line what we have to uh, see. But is this a true story? Film. And Fraser Heston, when do you think a director crosses the line between accuracy and entertainment? 
Well, I think, I think you have to be careful with how far you go with dramatic license, but you've always got to exercise drama uh, as, as a major part of your craft. Your job is to tell an entertaining story. The opening sequence of the film, for example, which features uh, the possible uh, target uh, being, being a young boy and his mother, in, in the book it's actually a woman with a hand grenade. Uh, not a young boy. Uh, the the Iraqi sniper duel, for example, I think was uh, was played up quite a lot uh, in the film, perhaps justifiably so. Uh, in the book, it's much less important. So I think those are the things that you're inevitably going to get. Whether that makes it a, a glorification of war or not, uh, I, I doubt very much. Now, Ava DuVernay has gotten a lot of flack about Selma, the movie. Uh, if anybody read the historical records, you know that Lyndon Johnson almost bent over backwards to try to make civil rights happen, but in the movie he's much more reluctant than we would lead to believe. Is that sending the wrong message? This is supposed to be an accurate portrayal of what happened in that time, and you have a president who seemingly was agreeable and, and wanted to move this along, but in the movie he's not portrayed as such. If you want 100% accuracy, then see a documentary. But people don't do and, that. No, people and even, don't do and that. even then it might not be 100% accurate because the documentary filmmaker chooses what to portray and what not. It, it is true that some people might accept what they see in a motion picture, a dramatization, as the literal truth. But there's really nothing you can do about that. The ideal of making a drama, a docudrama, as 100% accurate as possible is really impossible to fulfill because storylines in real life don't have the kind of dramatic tension and flow that they do f for a movie. Barna, when, when, when a director does something like that, is it a disservice to history? I think, or, it, or, 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 you go. <laughs> I think it depends how, how far uh, he or she goes. I'm willing to give uh, Selma a pass. I think it's uh, close enough to, uh, to what happened. And like Paul said, that you do need uh, narrative devices to make uh, a, a fictionalized account of reality work. Now, uh, if a film goes as far, say, as, as Oliver Stone sometimes did with his films, with JFK mm -hmm. or, or with Nixon, especially with JFK, where we're, I mean, in my opinion, the only thing that had in common with, with, with the real events was that there does seem to be a, a place called Dallas in the U.S. and a guy <laughs> called Kennedy got killed there. Yeah. The rest was, was all completely fiction. And then on top of that, he wanted to use the film as this activist tool where he says that I want young people to look at this and now go and demand answers. That, that offends but me when it goes it, that The story far. wouldn't have changed much, Selma, if the president was more agreeable. I mean... It, his, his well, former aide, Joseph Califano, even said, hey, the movie's a great story. Yeah. You don't need to adjust it. I think it's, it, it just worries me um, with that. What, what, she, what she did, it worries me, because right now in the country, we do have a lot of racial problems. And, right, and, and I think essentially what she did was alienate somebody that was on their side, you know, on the civil rights side. Um, and, you know, it's just contributing to a bigger problem. I think that can, it's a little bit dangerous. Um, you know, the, you know, I, I, I can give her a pass for for this. I don't think it was too far out there, but um, you know she definitely walked a line. Frazier, yeah. in this particular movie, do you give the director a pass as well, or should she have been more accurate with regard to President Johnson? I, I, I would agree with with the previous comment that that I think she gets a pass, but I think it is dangerous. I think it's it's a divisive issue to begin with, and I think perhaps she made it a little more divisive when, after all, it was Johnson who was uh, uh, in instrumental in helping to pass the Civil Rights Act. Okay, Jim. Uh, I think, uh, you know, my father marched with Dr. King, and he actually reported there was some resistance within Hollywood to the March on Washington. Uh, he was, he was uh, one of the few people who uh, agreed to go and do it. So there is a lot of controversy involved in that. And, and I just want to say, we don't really know judge. what was in Johnson's mind at all times. We have to bear in mind part of what we think of Lyndon Johnson. Well, there Johnson. were aides in the room during those meetings. Yeah, but they are interested in Johnson's image. Mm -hmm. and, and his legacy for that exactly. matter. Exactly. Gentlemen, thank you very much. A nice Oscar preview and a discussion of some of the controversy surrounding it. It's this Sunday, of course, and we'll all be watching, or we should be watching. We look at some other important events as we do in the news every week and our popular lightning round when Fresh Outlook continues.